Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order No. 50 for 2018, assigning His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to develop the performance of the executive bodies. Article No. 1 of the order stipulates entrusting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and First Deputy Prime Minister with the development of the bodies of the executive authority and the issuance of all necessary decisions in this regard, mainly the appointment of directors and their transfer to ministries and government sectors. Article number two stipulates entrusting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and First Deputy Prime Minister with the presidency of the Civil Service Bureau and the formation of the Civil Service Council. Article number three stipulates that the Civil Service Bureau follows the Civil Service Council. Article number four stipulates that Decree 22 of 2011 on transferring the affiliation of the Civil Service Bureau to the Council of Ministers is abrogated. Any text inconsistent with the provisions of this order shall be repelled. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiya Palace the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Khalid for his contributions and efforts of developing the government work after taking the position of Deputy President of Civil Service Council and for his effective role in improving the work environment in government institutions. His Royal Highness hailed the contributions of the people of Bahrain in the National Work March and their effective role in implementing the developmental programs adopted by the government, expressing the government's appreciation for these contributions. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed thanks and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to, to developing the government work environment, asserting that all the achievements and developments in the government and civil service are a result of His Royal Highness's directives. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, today received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Al Yamama Palace in Riyadh. On the sidelines of the Future Investment Initiative, FII, held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques and the chairmanship of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. His Highness Sheikh, uh, Sheikh, Salman, uh, Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad and members of Bahrain's high-level delegation led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness conveyed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques along with His Majesty's best wishes for Saudi Arabia's continued progress and prosperity. He attributed the strength of the bilateral relationship to the long-standing and diverse ties between both countries across all sectors. His Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's unwavering support for Saudi Arabia's efforts to promote regional development and security. The Crown Prince praised Saudi Arabia's efforts to ensure all citizens benefit from inclusive development. He concluded by congratulating Saudi Arabia on hosting another successful FII, praising the event's role in addressing global development challenges and facilitating investment opportunities. The custodian of the two holy mosques welcomed His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit and conveyed his greetings to His Majesty the King, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. 
The governor of Riyadh and the head of the Tourist Development Council in the region, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bender bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Minister of State member of the Cabinet and advisor to the King, His Royal Highness Prince Dr. Mansour bin Mut'ab bin Abdulaziz, the Minister of State and Cabinet member Dr. Msaad bin Muhammad Al Iban, the Minister of Finance of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Jad'an, the Minister of Culture and Information, Dr. Awad bin Saad. The Saudi ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Al Sheikh, also attended the meeting. This conference, I think, has been proven for a second year to be an ideal uh, forum in which we come here and we see the investment opportunities available in Saudi Arabia. We also have a chance to meet many international delegations that are here presenting their projects and showing us investment opportunities that we as Mumtalakat would like to look into and possibly invest into it. We have taken this opportunity to really present the investment climate in Bahrain and what Bahrain can offer to investment uh, uh, companies and at least, and that have shown a lot of interest. As you know, Bahrain economy has been growing and has been the highest growth in the GCC. There's a good, a lot of investment opportunity. The climate is very uh, friendly. And when we explain that to a lot of people, it is very refreshing for them. And it opens the opportunity really for us to attract investment into Bahrain and to open investment for us elsewhere. It's a really important conference. It's very important. It's past due that Saudi Arabia has uh, conferences like this. I think that these kind of conferences really put us on the map when it comes to the investment world. If you look at the number of attendees and the quality of the attendees, all of them have been heads of state, CEOs, deputy CEOs. For that shows you, and the turnout is over 3,000 up to now. For that shows you how important the whole world looks at Saudi Arabia in terms of the investment arena. This will help in the vision 2030 that has been laid out, that has given us all a roadmap, whether we're from the private sector or the public sector or investors from abroad. All of them have been intrigued into this vision 2030 and that's what we're all here for, to do and participate in our part and what could come back to us as profit, but meanwhile, to the goal of the nation, which is the Vision 2030. I'm very, very optimistic about the region. I really, truly believe in the next 10 years, this region is going to prosper in a very big way, and I'm I would, going to come back again next year, so I'm looking forward to come back again here to the conference here again and to the region itself. I think the benefit is a network to understand the region more meeting the real people like yourself and um, to just get the feel of the region itself. And I think that that's the best way to do it, to come here and to meet the real people and to speak to them. First of all, uh, compared to the, you know, uh, the summit last year and compared to the summit this year, uh, we can see uh, a massive uh, contract has been signed this year. Uh, the, you know, the budget is ex or the amount is exceed 60 billion US dollar. Uh, that all given a great indication that Saudi Arabia is the incubator uh, for investment and it is the leader of uh, having a stabilities and implement the stabilities and security across the GCC and a leader of a GCC. Uh, we are uh, going towards achieving our vision 2030 and uh, you know, the Future Investment Summit is one of the you know, right arms uh, initiative to take us to that level. Uh, under the you know the uh, the supervision of his uh, royal highness uh, prince mohammed bin salman and uh, king salman bin abdul aziz absolutely vitally important because we live in a very connected world uh, we grow and prosper by getting the best and the brightest of talent from around the world knowledge technology capacity so these kind of events bring us together to showcase what we have what we need what we can offer to the world and what the world can offer to us and how we can collaborate and uh, create value together. So, brilliant, wonderful networking opportunity. And PIF, the Public Investment Fund, has yet again shown its convening power in, able, in being able to attract, uh, not just from the region, but from literally around the world. My business in power generation and delivering desalinated water. So, I'm looking for technological innovation. How can I use artificial intelligence? How can I use machine learning? How can I use uh, the big data? These are the kind of things. And of course, money. We need development financing. 
how to attract money, how to deal with. So this is all about networking, getting to know people, connecting, and learning about what is up to date, and showing to them, we are good people, we are professionals, we make business, how we can make business together. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met with the President of the Gabonese Republic, Ali Bongo on Dimba. On the sidelines of His Royal Highness's visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to attend the Future Investment Initiative, the FII. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the President discussed a range of regional and international issues. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince discussed ways to further enhance bilateral ties between Bahrain and Gamun across various fields, including agriculture and investment. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday arrived in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia to attend the Future Investment Initiative following an official invitation from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Chairman of the Council for Economic and Development Affairs and Chairman of the Public Investment Fund Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The 2018 FII is held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and is shared by the Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. His Royal Highness was welcomed by the Deputy Governor of Riyadh, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Abdulrahman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Ambassador of Bahrain to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials. In a statement, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince said he was pleased to visit Saudi Arabia to attend the Future Investment Initiative and to meet with the Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. He emphasized that the FII represents a unique platform to discuss how the region's economic transformation can be accelerated through inter-regional collaboration and said he looked forward to discussing a range of shared priorities with Bahrain's partners over the course of the conference. He conveyed His Majesty the King's best wishes to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and to the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince noted that from culture to trade, security cooperation, and the wider economy, the bilateral relationship is long standing, diverse, and strong now ever than ever before. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain Saudi relations represent the benchmark for how partnerships can drive innovation and shared growth. And Bahrain is committed to exploring new ways to build on that partnership for years to come. He wished Saudi Arabia and its people further progress and prosperity under its leadership. His Royal Highness was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, senior government officials and representatives from the private sector. The Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation brief celebrated the victory of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the Iron Man Championship that was held in Kona, the United States. Present at the event were the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, along with the Secretary.
Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar, as well as a number of sports figures and members of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation. The SNDs took part in the event and celebrated by riding horses from the Bahrain Endurance Village heading to Bilaj al Jazair. Also taking part in the celebration were bikers and various local stables and equestrian centers, where His Highness Sheikh Nasser took part in both the horses and bikes parades. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed gratitude to the President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation for this celebration and extended his appreciation to all the participants. Sheikh Faisal affirmed that this celebration comes as a gesture of pride and appreciation for the historic achievement made by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, noting that this event is the least the equestrian community could do for His Highness Sheikh Nasser. Sheikh Faisal also noted that Brief is keen to celebrate His Highness Sheikh Nasser, who is regarded as a role model in the sports sector, especially for delivering the best of examples in fulfilling a promise he made earlier by achieving victory in the Ironman Championship. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the celebration held by the Bahrain Olympic Committee BOC on the occasion of His Highness's winning first place in the Ironman Championship held recently in Kona, the United States. The ceremony was held in the presence of the President and members of the BOC Board of Directors. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed appreciation to the BOC Board of Directors members and employees for the gesture, wishing them success. His Highness expressed pride in the sports administrative achievements made by the BOC and the outstanding international awards it won, its ability to host and organize sports events, and supervision of the work of national federations to gain a distinguished status among World Olympic Committees. The Olympic Committee's employees greeted and congratulated His Highness on the historic achievement in which they expressed pride. They pledged to work for the advancement.
advancement of Bahraini sports. For his part, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, congratulated His Highness Sheikh Nasser on the achievement in which he expressed pride. He commended His Highness's support to the committee, which made ample achievements under the championship uh, cha chairmanship on all levels. He affirmed that the staff of the committee will spare no effort to achieve a brighter future for the committee. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim presented a commemorative gift to His Highness Sheikh Nasser. The Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, attended today the concluding event of the Joint Drill Hamad Shield 1. The exercise is carried out by the Joint Peninsula Shield Forces in the presence of the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Naimi. Upon arrival, the BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by the Commander of the Joint Peninsula Shield Forces, Major General Abdelaziz bin Ahmed Al Barawi, as well as senior official officers. After the national anthem, the Commander-in-Chief was briefed on the objectives and phases of the drill as well as its outcomes. He also toured the operation center and reviewed the drill. A number of officers gave a presentation on the tasks and duties of the commander or the command as well as its different mechanisms and advanced equipment. The BDF Commander-in-Chief affirmed that this drill reflects the advanced level of readiness, plans and training programs of the Joint Peninsula Shield Forces. He added that this this drill coincides with an air drill, basic liaison 2018, and the maritime drill, bridge 19, which are implemented to develop the capability of forces in order to face all military challenges. He stressed the importance of holding such exercises for their role in developing the combat capability and readiness of forces and to establish an integrated military strategy to preserve peace and stability in the region. He also emphasized the need to confront media wars by training specialized specialists or specialized competencies lauding the distinguished military media role in this regard. The exercise was attended by the General Command Corps Director, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Supply and Catering, Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Malallah, Assistant Chief of Staff, Major General Ghani Ibrahim Al-Fadala, and Senior Officers. تحرص قيادة قوات درع الجزيرة المشتركة على رفع جاهزية وحداتها وهذا بناء على توجيهات أصحاب المعالي والسعادة رؤساء أركان دول المجلس تنفذ وحداتنا تمرين مركز قيادة من جانب واحد درع حمد واحد مملكة البحرين خلال الفترة من 21 إلى 24 أكتوبر وهو من التمارين المخطط لها مسبقا لتحقيق عدد من الأهداف ومنها تدريب القادة وإجراءات الركن وتنفيذ عمليات الدفاع الساحلي وأيضا التدريب على خطط التحرك والانتشار نتشرف في قيادة قوات درع الجزيرة المشتركة 
برعاية صاحب المعالي المشير القائد العام لقوات دفاع البحرين لاختتام فعاليات تمرين درع حمد واحد ختاما نسأل الله التوفيق للجميع بما يخدم كل ما شانه تقوية روابط التعاون والتنسيق المشترك تنفيذ القيادة المتقدمة لقوات درع الجزيرة المشتركة لتمرين درع حمد واحد يؤكد اهتمام القيادة المتقدمة لتنفيذ سلسلة من التمارين المشتركة التي تزيد من كفاءة واحترافية وانسجام العمل العسكري بين وحدات درع الجزيرة المشتركة وما يميز هذا التمرين أنه يحمل اسم غالي علينا جميعا وهو سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى القائد الأعلى أيده الله ويجسد رعاية جلالته المستمرة لمسيرة التعاون والتنسيق العسكري الخليجي المشترك under the patronage of the Honorary President of the Civil Social Work Fund, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labor and Social Development held the 10th ceremony for the distribution of financial grants to NGOs and charitable associate societies in the presence of the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan. The NGO grants programs is one of the development projects supervised by the Social Work Fund of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development with the support of the private sector to support these NGOs and their charitable and voluntary activities. This year, 47 out of 74 societies won the prize money awards at the 10th session of the program with a total value of 155,000 dinars. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali expressed sincere congratulations to the winning NGOs. He pointed out that uh, what distinguishes the Kingdom of Bahrain is the partnership and close cooperation between the government sector and the private sector to implement social development projects, praising the private sector for its remarkable role in development. He said that Bahrain's openness to civil voluntary work is a result of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. For his part, the Minister of Labor and Social Development thanked His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa for his support of the charitable, social and developmental work in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Minister of Labor and Social Development presented certificates of financial grants to the winning societies. The health insurance law for the upcoming National Social Health Insurance Program, Sahati, is the result of the strong collaboration between the public sector and the legislative authority. More on this report with Mohammed Shaban. The health insurance law is one of the major achievements of the current legislative body. This law is meant to reform the whole health infrastructure in the country to boost the quality of health care and ensure sustainability. The law is a prime example of cooperation between government institutes and the representative insurer councils. Actually, the law had passed through you know, many stages. First, it actually act reformed the law with the cooperation with the uh, Crown Prince Office and the other uh, consultants from different parts of the government. And when we finished the, the law, actually, we passed it to the government. The government approved it, and it passed to the uh, representative can uh, council. Uh, and actually, they had discussed it uh, you know, thoroughly with the uh, uh, service uh, committee there and actually we had a lot of meeting with them and discuss with them all the details and they actually had understand all what we uh, we meant by this and they were had been you know very cooperative very uh, uh, you know in this card and they you know passed it to, to the council and the council approved it the law was passed following numerous meetings and discussions between various authorities to bring about the ideal standards for the health reform plan as per the directives of the national health plan endorsed by cabinet in 2016 we started the meetings with the parliament and the Shura Council, uh, putting the ideas from beginning, okay, uh, to, to start the process of developing the law. Then, in, in, uh, in late uh, 2016, we, we, uh, the cabinet actually, the cabinet uh, translated the law to the parliament, and we had many, many meetings, very long. Uh, hard discussion meetings with them and I must say that uh, during those around one year and a half discussing the law there has been a lot a lot of of input from uh, not only the the parliament the shura indirectly the we we managed all together to work 
in the background to come up with the law as it is. Autonomous structures, a government-run fund, quality controls, preserved rights, and a sustainable system. These are the perks of a law that would create the ideal health system of the future. Reporting for Bahrain International News, this is Mohamed Shaban. Cabinet Affairs Minister Mohammed bin Ibrahim al mutawwa stated that the government form 2018 scheduled for the 28th of October under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa at the initiative of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa is a confirmation of the development of the governmental work and efforts to achieve sustainable development within the framework of Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 based on sustainability, competitiveness and justice. The minister said that all public sector authorities would participate in the government forum to discuss the development and progress tracks. He said that the forum will focus on the continuation of the improvement of government services, noting that winners of the public sector institutions in areas of education quality award, excellence award in communication with customers and government best practices award will be honored during the forum. Under the patronage of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim al mutawwa the fourth edition of the Bahrain Excellence Forum has launched today. Organized by the Act Smart for Public Relations Consultations in cooperation with Artificial Intelligence Society in Bahrain. al mutawwa stated that the forum's title expressed the aspirations of the people who wish to live in the future. The forum held three sessions on artificial intelligence, its role in improving services and the best practices of its applications. The first uh, artificial intelligence uh, conference in Bahrain in this spectrum. Uh, we have over two days and over uh, 70 participants talking about uh, strategic uh, issues of the artificial intelligence, which is invading the whole world. We should do more with it because this is something if we don't adopt today, it will be forced on us in future. The whole world is moving that way. The countries is considering artificial intelligence as their strategical direction um, and uh, investing billions of dollars uh, in states, Europe, China and India. I'll be uh, showing a number of uh, uh, examples, uh, including chatterbots being, being, uh, being developed for, uh, uh, to deal with the patients. Uh, also, robots that are uh, uh, that have been used in uh, in, in doing certain uh, tasks in the field. Uh, also, um, big data and data mining to customize um, treatments for patients. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, two ministers and officials to visit work fields and inspect the workflow, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, accompanied by the Chief Executive Officer of the Electricity and Water Authority, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, visited Al Hid 400 KV Power Transmission Station. During the visit, Dr. Mirza stated that this strategic project is considered a quantum leap in the development of electricity transmission networks in the kingdom and comes within the main plan set by the Electricity and Water Authority to develop and expand the electricity transmission networks in Bahrain in light of the directives of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to provide electricity and water services and meet the growing demand for their use for urban, industrial and commercial development. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, the International Downstream Conference and Exhibition opened yesterday by the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, in the presence of distinguished delegations from around the world. The Minister expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness for his keen desire to support the oil, gas and petrochemical sector in the Kingdom and highlighted the importance of the event in boosting the Kingdom's reputation as a regional hub for international events. Gulf Downstream Association, with its focus on refining and uh, downstream petrochemicals, really wants to establish a center of excellence for all the national oil companies in the GCC. Now, the founding members are Saudi Aramco, KPC of Kuwait, Babco from Bahrain and Adenoc, and of course we're getting international partners that will establish their presence with the GDA. Their flagship event is this conference we have today. Uh, the idea is all the experiences are brought together 
we focus on bringing the, uh, the young generation into uh, a much uh, mature uh, form of development. You have uh, safety as a priority, profitability and, and margins, and you have what's, op what's called operability of these plants. All together make it a very important uh, conference and exhibition. Very glad today to uh, attend the opening ceremony of the GDA, the Gulf Downstream Association Conference and Exhibition. This exhibition is uh, uh, a chance for the refiners and petrochemicals to meet with technology providers, catalyst providers to ensure that they are fully aware of the latest technology in petrochemical and refining business and I hope this will also encourage transferring all the technology into our area. We are all, for the last 18 years, we were in the Kingdom of Bahrain, different names, but this is the first time under the new name, which is the GDA, the Gulf Downstream Association, and we are very grateful for the Kingdom of Bahrain for hosting these events. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, signed a memorandum of understanding on Sunday with the Green Climate Fund, the GCF. Executive Director of the GCF, Javier Manzanares, signed on behalf of the GCF in order to review technical, institutional and financial frameworks for projects aimed at mitigating and adapting to climate change. This came on the sideline of Bahrain's hosting the 21st meeting of the GCF with a broad participation of representatives of official states and relevant international organizations from various countries of the world. Today we've signed an MOU uh, with uh, the management of the uh, fund. Of course, we uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Javier uh, for uh, being announced the CEO uh, of the Climate Change Fund. Uh, and what, uh, what we're signing is an MOU to study the opportunity of setting up uh, an investment bank uh, that could uh, potentially uh, finance projects that are deemed clean or green for that matter, not only in energy but other uh, other avenues as well. We are here today to, uh, to sign with the Minister uh, a Memorandum of Understanding in which uh, we will be uh, jointly uh, working together, uh, sharing uh, technical knowledge, technical expertise, best practices, uh, aspiration as the DGCF is to uh, uh, make sure that the climate change and climate action is mainstream in investment decisions and, uh, and in lending decisions. And there is an initiative from the, the minister to uh, set up a clean energy investment bank. Uh, we're very happy to work together and see if we can make that happen. The Gulf Downstream Association also held a gala dinner to celebrate the first international conference and exhibition under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The Minister delegated Dr. Zafar Al Jalahma, acting CEO of Noga Holding, to hand out a number of awards for excellence in the oil and gas industry in the GCC. Present at the event were industry officials, executive heads, and senior engineers. Al Jalahma conveyed the greetings of the Minister to the participating Gulf delegations wishing them a good stay in their second home, Bahrain. He also extended congratulations to all the winners of all categories, wishing them further achievements. We are grateful for the Kingdom of Bahrain and its leadership. Uh, we've uh, had the honor of the patronage of His uh, Royal Highness uh, Prince Khalifa, and we had been blessed this morning with the presence of His uh, Excellency uh, Prince Ali as well, Khalifa, who had inaugurated and, and opened up the exhibit. And of course, all of the effort would not have come to the, you know, to the level that it has reached to without the support and endless efforts that His uh, Excellency also Sheikh Mohammed uh, had uh, continuously supported the efforts of GDA and the industry in general. And we are forever uh, thankful and grateful for his support. Liwas came up as the Leadership uh, Excellence for Women Awards and uh, its main purpose is to encourage women in the industry, in the oil and gas industry uh, and to recognize them so that they are uh, continuing their uh, development and continuing their achievements. So uh, tonight I was uh, nominated for the Rising Star Award and uh, it just 
it's just a, a big encouragement uh, for me as a young engineer in this industry to continue my work and my passion. On the sidelines of the Future Investment Initiative held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Saudi Minister of Transportation, Dr. Nabil bin Mohammed Al Amoudi, and the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, announced the submission of a consultancy service tender for the management of the transitional phase of the King Hamad Causeway project next week. The Saudi Minister of Transportation stated that the project is an implementation of the directives of the directives of the leaders of the two kingdoms and was the best motive for the two countries to meet the challenges. He added that the project will be implemented in partnership with the private sector according to the royal directives in both countries. For his part, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications noted that the consultancy services tender for the management of the transitional phase of the King Hamad Causeway project will be submitted next week by King Fahad Causeway Authority, an advanced stage for this strategic project. He added that this stage was preceded by a series of important steps, including the completion of the preliminary economic feasibility study and the initial design. In implementation of the Physical Balance Program, the work team to reduce travel and transport expenses held its meeting today. Headed by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication, President of the Work Team to Reduce Travel and Transport Expenses, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed. The Minister hailed the content of Physical Balance Program, adding that among the program's initiative is reducing the operational expenses of the government to form and activate work teams that give the necessary authorization. The meeting discussed the implementation mechanism which should be followed by the work team and coordination. Among them is coordination with the concerned affiliates of the Ministry of Finance. The Minister of Health, Faiq bin Saeed Al Saleh, chaired on Sunday the meeting of the work group on operating expenses, which is entrusted with medical resources, where they discussed a number of topics on the meeting's agenda. Al Saleh affirmed that these initiatives, which were created to enhance the efficiency of government expenditure and contribute to the sustainability and stability of financial conditions, continue to promote the pace of development for the benefit of the country and the citizens. She also noted that the outcomes of the team's work would have a significant impact on the success of the physical balance program aimed at balancing expenditure and government revenues by 2022. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, headed Bahrain's delegation participating in the World Investment Forum, organized by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in the Swiss capital, Geneva, from 20, the 21st until the 25th of October. The opening ceremony was attended by senior officials from the world's top businessmen, as well as representatives from the UNCTAD. The agenda of the forum included a number of important topics and themes in the global economic arena, including the challenges of developing current and emerging investments. The Information Affairs Under Secretary Abdurrahman Mohammed Bahar said that Bahrain Television has finished archi archiving 85,000 television and news articles documenting the modern history of Bahrain since the beginning of the 20th century. To monitor and record the outstanding achievements during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary has received the Assistant Under Secretary for Radio and Television, Abdullah Dosri, and the Digital Archiving Team at Bahrain TV, led by TV Acting Director Qais Al Dosri, and expressed his appreciation of the efforts exerted to archive around 40% of the archiving enterprise. He added that the archived media items have been preserved. By by modern technical means to protect them from damage because of their valuable historical and cultural significance. The digital archiving enterprise is within the modernization project and initiatives led by the Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Rumehi to develop the media and communication sector. The Under Secretary stressed the ministry's keenness to follow up its technical and technological projects, including the digital processing of media materials that are a crucial testimony of Bahrain's history, features, civilization, landmarks, and distinguished presence as a leading model in reform, modernization, and comprehensive and sustainable development. 
The registration period for requesting nomination for the 2018 parliamentary and municipal election closed on Sunday. The total number of requests of nomination is 506, which include 346 for the Council of Representatives and 160 for the municipal councils. With the 2018 parliamentary and municipal elections approaching, it is important to bear in mind the significance of taking part in the election process and participating in the democratic rights provided by the citizens by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. This election is cementing that relation from a constitutional uh, legal aspect where people, knowledgeable people from the community are given the honor to participation, to participate in decision making in important issues that affect our future and the future of our young people. So it is so important to participate because of the benefits, but also to endorse His Majesty the King's initiatives to advance Bahrain to a, a higher platform. I encourage all the Bahrainis, all the voters whom they can vote to participate in their duty, to participate in their rights. This is their rights. This is their duty. I think Bahrain need them at this moment. Let us see how you are actually, you know, um, coming forwards and participating your duty to serve Bahrain. You are now empowered to give your voice, to have a representative under the Dome of Parliament um, and please vote. Uh, do not listen to voices that tell you to boycott elections. After all, you need to vote. You need to give your voice to democracy and uh, just go out there and vote. Amcham Bahrain, in collaboration with the Capital Government and the U.S. Embassy, held the Innovation in Tourism, building the tourism sector for the Savvy Traveler Business Networking Luncheon, where CEO of the BTEA, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, was a keynote speaker. More on this report by Hibat Al Ghaffar. Latest developments and innovations in the local and regional tourism sectors were discussed today in the business networking luncheon organized by Amcham Bahrain. In collaboration with the Capital Governorate and the U.S. Embassy to unlock new investment opportunities, beneficial partnerships and fruitful collaborations. We're here uh, today to talk about the uh, revolution in the uh, travel industry, the tourism industry and uh, what are the developments as far as uh, the technology is involved, how it is evolving and how it is changing the whole uh, perspective of the uh, travelers, the choices it is giving them uh, and, and, and where it's going. We are involved in supporting the uh, America Week and as well as the, uh, the Innovation Week. So both of them are very important to us and both of them are interlinked because uh, uh, as uh, the American Chamber of Commerce, we are there to support the, the local activities as well as international activities between the U.S. and Bahrain.
The luncheon is a great initiative to highlight cooperation between Bahrain and the United States in commerce, tourism and many levels. It served as a great platform gathering tourism professionals from public and private sectors to actively discuss the latest in the field and further discuss plans and means of collaboration. Really, tourism is about people, and it's about people visiting and learning about other cultures and societies. And this is where I think is one of the strongest aspects of our relationship with Bahrain. The many Bahrainis who travel to the United States and the many Americans who travel to Bahrain on an annual basis. We think, uh, we have the, the figures we have are 50,000 Americans travel to Bahrain every year. Uh, we have many thousands of Bahrainis who also travel to the United States on a regular basis. We have about 11,000 uh, um, individuals who come to our embassy every year for visas from Bahrain, Bahrainis and then residents of Bahrain. Chief Executive Officer of BTE Asia, Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, was the keynote speaker where he discussed the kingdom's latest statistics, achievements, and future plans of the BTEA, which will contribute to the advancement and progress of the local economy and tourism sector. I was delighted for the opportunity to explore Bahrain for the very first time. And of course, I am super grateful uh, because everyone has made it feel like home. I think you are a gem and a best kept secret in this region. And I can't wait to go back to the United States and tell everybody that if anyone is thinking about doing business in the Middle East, they have to come here because you are at the epicenter of growth and innovation and entrepreneurship. Constant discussions, exchange of ideas, experiences and suggestions are great means to develop and enhance the tourism sector, which contributes to the achievement of the Kingdom's Economic Vision 2030. As part of the Manama Entrepreneurship Week, the AppCham highlights today the great partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., gathering tourism experts to discuss today building the tourism sector and innovation in tourism. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheb Abdul Ghafoor. As part of the Manam Entrepreneurship Week at the Discover America Week, the Capital Governorate, the U.S. Embassy to Bahrain, American Chamber of Commerce and C5 held yesterday the business talk with the American entrepreneur Lily Gil Valletta, providing a great platform for exchange of idea, ideas and expertise or experiences. The U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Sabral, introduced the recognized cultural intelligence expert, World Economic Forum Young Global Leader and the award-winning entrepreneur who came all the way from the U.S. to participate in this eventful week in celebration of entrepreneurship and connecting with aspiring Bahrain youth. An open interactive dialogue, diversity, inclusivity in business, women empowerment in business and technology, entrepreneurship and much more inspiring topics were discussed. Such dialogues are key to building a healthy entrepreneurship ecosystem which is of the main goals of Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The collaboration between Bahrain and the United States on so many levels reflects the extremely robust relationship and long-standing and mutually beneficial partnerships that allows each country to enhance the other's strength and capabilities. Partnering with Manama Entrepreneurship Week and with the U.S. Embassy because it's Discover America Week um, on a panel discussion with Lily Valletta who is visiting here from the U.S. to talk really about entrepreneurship, diversity and inclusivity in business and really also about empowering women in areas like business and technology. It's so important and so powerful that entrepreneurs and innovators and different voices and perspectives can come together. I think that is why exactly Discover America Week, for example, has been created. And I'm so grateful uh, to the U.S. Embassy that brought me all the way from New York so that we can exchange ideas. That's the way innovation happens. A lot of people talk about the tech sector being so important or uh, artificial intelligence and new things in the space. But at the end of the day, all of that happens happens through the power of collaboration, you cannot do it alone. So uh, Bahrain continues to impress me as I see how it's creating an ecosystem that fosters this exchange. And I hope that more people from the United States are able to come and see what I'm feeling, because it's not enough to read about it. You have to be here to see it and be part of, of this exciting boom.